we need to talk about a few really interesting NASCAR driver announcements. There have been a few different NASCAR driver announcements over the last probably two weeks or so that are actually really interesting. And on Wednesday, we got two more. Two former Formula One drivers will be making their return to NASCAR when the series heads to Circuit of the Americas in a few weeks. Kamui Kobayashi, of course, made his NASCAR Cup Series debut last year with 2311 Racing in the number 67 car at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the road course. He finished 33rd, not really indicative of, of his speed, had some unfortunate things happen. But he will be returning to the Cup Series, this time at Circuit of the Americas in Austin, driving the number 50 car for 2311 Racing once again, and hopefully he can get a better finish than that 33rd. He, of course, is a 24 Hours of Le Mans winner, two-time WEC champion, two-time Daytona 24 winner, Formula One podium finisher, eat your heart out, Nico Hulkenberg. He's a guy that can be absolutely wheel a race car, and I'm really excited to see what he can do. Obviously, he has a great relationship with Toyota, considering he runs their hypercar program over in WEC, and now he's going to get a chance to run NASCAR once again. Everybody should welcome him. I'm sure we won't hear the whole stepbrothers like Kobayashi. No, 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 no. You know what I'm talking about right there. Yeah, that's definitely going to get tweeted out multiple times during the Coda weekend. Another former Formula One driver will also be joining him in Coda, just in the Xfinity series. Former Red Bull driver turned Russian rocket, Danny Kafiat, will be driving in the Xfinity series for SS Greenlight Racing in the number 07 car. I wish we could get a Ray Black Jr. throwback, maybe that old scuba diving paint scheme, but I don't think that's going to happen. Instead, he'll likely bring along his own sponsor. Regardless, Kafiat is an accomplished race car driver, three-time F1 podium finisher. Once again, Nico Hulkenberg, eat your art out. He also has made select starts in the Cup Series before. In 2022, he made three starts with Hesburgh Racing. His best finish was 36. He also made a start for Sam Hunt Racing that same year on the Charlotte Roval, finished 15th. The guy does have a ton of talent. He was a Ferrari reserve driver for a while as well and he's kind of bounced around and maybe he can carve out his own little niche here in the cup series hopefully he can or nascar series rather not necessarily cup and hopefully he can on the other side the reverse of formula one on the grassroots racing side we've had some really interesting announcements basically coming out of the number 88 team in the Xfinity series. Obviously, we all know that the JRM 88 is basically reserved for Dale Earnhardt Jr. More weeks than not, or more often than not, unless Miguel Paluto is going to buy a race or they do some one-offs here and there. But it now is kind of turning into this really interesting all-star car for some up-and-coming drivers, except we've already heard of at least one of these guys, or he's past the up-and-coming stamp point, I believe. So, a few weeks ago, we had an announcement that Bubba Pollard would be making his NASCAR Xfinity Series debut at Richmond at the end of the month on March 30th, driving the 88 car sponsored by Ream. Bubba Pollard, if you don't know him, NASCAR fans absolutely need to know this guy. He is a monster on the late model circuit. The guy's won basically every late model race that you could possibly want to win on asphalt, except for the Snowball Derby, but he'll probably eventually win that too. When you look at his list of accomplishments, he's won, like I said, just about everything under the sun. World Series of Asphalt, Rattler, um, so he won the Snowflake as well, Money in the Bank, Slinger Nationals. All-American 400, the guy does nothing but win. But at 37 years old, he's a little bit too old to probably be making that full transition to NASCAR at this point. And I don't necessarily think he wants to do it based on some things that he's previously said as well. Bubba Pollard is a working class guy. He's the epitome of what NASCAR fans want. They are tired of these guys that come in and pay for the rights. All these rich kids, pay drivers, everything like that. Bubba Pollard is that blue collar working class hero that you want to get behind and you want to support. So... When the series gets to Richmond at the end of the month, support Bubba Pollard. I don't know if they're going to make merch for him or not. At the very least, just tune in because more than likely, the guy's going to put on at least a little bit of a show. I don't know if he's going to win considering it's his first time in an Xfinity car, but it's really interesting that Dale put this deal together and I'm pumped for it. A week after that, on April 6th, Carson Quapple, two-time defending car store champion and the next Josh Berry project at JRM, will be making his Xfinity Series debut as well. He, of course, is the guy, the guy, he's the guy over at JRM right now that they're kind of putting all their effort behind, at least in the grassroots side of things. Like I said, the Josh Berry. He made his Truck Series debut last year for Spire in the fall Bristol race. Well, I guess there's only one fall asphalt race last year over there, which was great for him. He finished 12th in that race. He also made his ARCA debut last year and finished second. Uh, so this kid has all the talent that you could possibly want. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the funding like all these rich kids that buy their rides. And JRM's business model is built off of these kids bringing sponsorship. And they're not necessarily rich kids, but they do bring sponsorship with them 
for Carson to get this done. He needs to have a good showing there and then, you know, hopefully convince Bass Pro Shops or whoever else to hop on that car and maybe help expand out his schedule in the Xfinity Series before he could potentially go full time be really interesting to see and I'm pumped to see what this kid can do because what happened the last time a guy ran a partial schedule for JRM at Martinsville went to victory lane and Josh Berry did that so we'll see if cars can do the same thing and then earlier this week we also had another announcement for the JRM 88 and it would be that Connor Zilich will be joining the team for four races at the end of the season once he turns 18 in July the kid's 17 years old. He already has a Rolex uh, Daytona 24 win in the LMP2 class, so he's just walking around strutting that Rolex Daytona. He's also won in the MX-5 Cup. He won the Sebring uh, Trans Am TA race a few weeks ago. The kid wins in everything that he gets in. He won a Cars Tour race uh, last year at Ace. Like I said, he's an absolute wheel man. He has a very diverse racing background, which I think is the most interesting part about him. He's a track house development driver, and Chevy's put a lot of weight behind him as well. Last year at Watkins Glen in the Arca Series, he should have won the race. Even with a broken sway bar, it took Jesse Love until the last corner of the last lap to move him out of the way and take that win away. This kid can absolutely wheel a race car, and he'll be making his debut with the team at Watkins Glen. He'll also be racing at Kansas Homestead in Phoenix as well to round out the season. So we'll get to see a pretty you know diverse schedule for the kid and, and see what he can get done here. Either way, the 88 Xfinity cars become probably the most interesting car in NASCAR at the moment in terms of their driver diversity. I have seen a lot of people being like, oh, so he's basically turned it into the Project 91 of, you know, the Xfinity series. Let's go ahead and get this straight. Project 91, that concept, that's been happening forever in NASCAR. There's always been tons of one-offs, tons of, you know, just an extra car that they would put random people into. It's just that Justin Marks and his team branded it, and now all of a sudden people think that, like, it's turning in everything that happens is a Project 91 type of thing. This has always gone on. It's just different now. I mean, Dale's been doing these one-offs so much. He's had guys like Greg Sachs, Kelly Byers, Jay McMurray, Coleman Presley, Ron Fellows, Steve Arpin, Josh Wise, Cole Witt, Shane Huffman. Uh, the list goes on and on of all these guys that have just done partial schedules or one-offs or just trying to do something different um, in the career to try to spark something and then hopping in a good car. I mean, at one point, he ran Ron Fellows, Tony Stewart, Scott Wimmer, Mark Martin uh, himself, and Richard Boswell in the same season. The guy's no stranger to putting some random people into his cars to see what they can do, and I absolutely love that concept. So let me know in the comments what you think about all these driver announcements. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.